inside the paint room we're going to have great fun we're going to be creating some amazing art but right now we are just going to run the titles see you in 30 seconds Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning in today and for joining us here in the global headquarters for Suarez. It's myself and AD out on controls. We are with you today, bringing you an amazing broadcast. Now, for those of you who have seen this broadcast before, you know the score, you know what happens next. But for those of you who are new, my name is Ed and I'm an abstract artist. I work with my colleague Adrian, who's the other side of this Hence, he'll be coming on the microphone to say hello as we continue doing some painting today. And that's exactly why you're here, because we are going to be doing this giant canvas right in front of your eyes from start to finish. Oh, yes, I kid you not. Let me take you through the basics. It's 3.2 meters long by 1.5 meters wide. So when it's eventually stretched around its frame, it's going to measure 300 centimeters by 130 i've no idea what that is an imperial or old money who knows but that's the size it's going to be and we're creating today on the tables as you can see down here now i put two of our special bespoke tables together because it gives me a flat surface on which to work from so we spent the afternoon putting them in leveling them up etc etc and now we've got a perfectly level surface on which to paint brilliant right so, Aid is now going to come in on the microphone. Hello. So, you're going to see this using four cameras. And I'm going to show you all four cameras now. These are the four camera angles that you'll be able to see it from. Now, Ed's going to start walking you through each camera. And we'll start with the corner cam. Right, corner cam. Okay, so we've done corner cam. Great, you can see everything that's going on on a wide shot. Right, pick me a camera next then, buddy. Okay, there we go. So this is our sliding camera. Okay, I'm going to stay in static in one place. There you go. It's moving to one and then, oh, look, it comes back again. And as with all of, our, well, three out of our four cameras, we can zoom, we can pan, we can tilt. So we can get all sorts, if I move over here, of angles, if he can follow me on. Here he comes. Follow me on behind. There we go. He's coming this way. Look, he's coming this way. <laughs> Here I am. This is the mixing bench. I've already got some colours out. We're going to be talking through that very, very shortly. Right, let's go to overhead cam then, buddy. Right, here we go. Let's see if I can get down. It's going to get itself centred and sorted out in just a second. There we go. There we go. Cool. That's overhead cam. Ah, Good, e good evening, good day, good morning, good night, whatever time of day it is. Who cares where you're watching it? There we are. There's overhead cam. So we're going to get an amazing left to right shot from the very top looking down. One of my favourite angles. And finally, uh, Rome cam. Hello, Rome cam. Let me show you what Rome cam does. And it's called Rome cam for a reason. Are you ready? Ready. We're roaming. We're roaming. Oh, let's go and have a look, shall we? There we go. That's the camera slider I was talking to you about. There's the overhead camera on its mounting bracket, which we can adjust. That's where I greeted you all just a few moments ago on the corner cam. I've also got my laptop so I can chat to the outside world. There's a mountain of things going on in here. There's the paint. But the great thing is, if you stick with us with Rome cam as we develop the painting, Rome cam is going to give us these amazing views of the canvas. Oh. So, are we excited? Of course we are. I'm really excited to get going. Like I said, thank you so much for joining us. We're really, really happy to have you here. And right now, I'm a bit closer. I'm actually going to be painting a real client's painting. This is a commission. 
that I'm actually going to be doing on this canvas. Can you believe that? It's not for fun. It's not just for the cameras. But I'm going to now show you, take you right inside all of the processes and everything that's about to happen on a real client's painting. They, what? <laughs> they don't even know I'm doing this as well. That's how cool this is. Right, ready? Let's go. Okay. So, like I said, for those of you who have seen this before, you know what's going to happen next. But if you are new and watching us for the very first time, a big warm welcome and thank you for being here. You might want to know that I have to wear breathing apparatus. I have a constant stream of fresh air going over my face and out through the mask because these are enamel paints. We've been using them for about 12 years. They are incredible. They're mixed especially for us here. But because they are very toxic, when they react with oxygen, I have to wear a full face breathing mask, which is why I look like a spaceman. All right, so there we go. I've already taken some of the lids off, and this is the selection of colours that we're going to be using this uh, today on this particular painting. I'll just adjust my microphone and just double check the lady. Just moved it back up the cheek. Can you still hear me okay? Okay, we're looking good. Right, so folks, what can I tell you about this? Well, this is going to be a multicoloured painting, hence why there are about 16, 15, 16 colours behind me. I'm not going to be mixing anything with the paints. The paints are coming straight out of the tin. We're going to put them onto the canvas. We're going to make some amazing shapes and amazing patterns with them. And then I'm going to be adding white in between all of these shapes. And then I'm going to be adding some magic ingredients. So stay tuned and I will explain what those as we go along. But for now, folks... I am going to get on so the first two colours, which are going to be red and blue. And I'm going to start that off uh, roughly in the centre of the canvas. So I'll just double check with my colleague outside. Everything OK? We all systems good? Right, OK. So I'm going to go back here then, mate, where my foot is. Let's, let's start there, OK? So I'm going to start with my red. OK, brilliant, fantastic. So Ada's going to have a little zoom on that. Now we've finally got some colour on. Happy about that. And uh, we're going to pop some uh, some blue next to it. I'm going to do a little cartwheel. So we're going to sort of go around the outside, around the outside. Oh, I'm going to pop that there. So hopefully you've seen that on the zoom shot. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> right. Who's up for a drop of? Well, we can call it pink, but actually it's called magenta. Uh, it's called Telemagenta, actually, which is very nice. For the technical amongst you, the, it's a, a RAL colour, which means it's a very, fairly standard colour. 4010. So we're going to get some of that there. And then we're going to have some round here as well. I don't know if you can follow me around there, buddy. So I've got a nice one spreading yeah, on both sides. So you can have a little look at that as AD goes to and fro. Now, as we're, um, we're moving off towards, as you're looking at it, the left side of the canvas, I'm going to attack that next. Okay, so we're roughly where he is. So I'm going to go about here, buddy, just on your side. And we're going to go in with some yellow. There we go. Nice. And I'm going to start gently just filling up some of these areas. And then I'm going to line up my tins of paint so that when I feel um, that I need to add a little bit more in certain areas, I can come back to the colours. And then I know exactly where I'm at. Right, so... Uh, on overhead camera now, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my position just a little bit. And I'm going to come in now with the lime green. Um, so I think if we go to the, your right, buddy. Let's take it over there and then I'll go with the lime green. I'm going to go with some up here, alright? Okay, some lime green there. And I'm probably going to do the same down here, actually. And I might, might come down into the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, or a corner cam shot, wherever you want to do with that, mate. Or Rome cam. Yeah, Rome cam, what's up? Right, so we're going to pop some of that gently over there. All right. Nice. So we're four colours in. And he's back on overhead. So I'm going to bring in blue metallic there. And I'm going to do a little drop there. It does look a little bit like black, this does. Um, <laughs> it is a blue. It's just a very dense, dark blue. It actually has a small metallic flake in it. 
which is pretty cool. And AJ's going to have a zoom on the blob to show you. I'm just going to carry on applying. So we're going in with the orange now. And we're going to go... I'm going to go some... Uh, right, I'm stepping actually physically on the painting now. <laughs> um, uh, which one are we on, buddy? We on, we're on overhead, okay. Right, so I'm going to go orange here. There you go, nice. So at the moment, what I'm actually doing is just distributing colour. I want to try and get as much colour variation in all these different parts as I possibly can. Um, so we're going in with the purples now. So I think I'm going to get introduce a purple around on this uh, top edge. Uh, so, yeah, so top edge uh, where you are. So I'm going to go, uh, yeah, let's have some, let's have some there. And we're going to go for like a pool as opposed to a, you know, the other shape. And then we're going to go for one in the top right corner. Okay, so there's one there. And it's quite key purple in this, so I'm going to pop some probably over on the far left as well. Now, Adrian's, Adrian's got a lot of... Um, a lot of pointing and redirecting of of the uh, the cameras to do of this one because it is actually quite a large painting so um yeah he's got his work cut out right so we're going to say so stick over this side i'm going in there with this color this is a really nice one called water blue kind of as the name suggests it's one of those you know sort of in between ones in between blue and green so it's kind of got this aqua tinge to it but it is actually officially called water blue Again, this is a RAL colour, if you are if you want to actually just go check it out as to uh, what the colour really looks like. Okay, so while I just give you a zoom of that, I'm going to prep the next colour. So we've got three left before I get onto the metallics. Uh, next one is going to be a burgundy. Really interesting, actually, about this particular colour. Are we still on overhead, dude? Right, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pop this down here. Maybe you can have a little look at the top of that tin. Yeah, now I hope you can see that this is kind of a burgundy, almost ch with chocolatey overtones. And it's a really, really interesting colour, this, because I'm liking this to being like a carrier, you know? So it kind of forms a lot of uh, underpinning for the other colours. I'll tell you why this is extremely versatile. And that is because... With this, I can go anywhere with reds because it looks amazing with reds. I'm just going to pop a little drop down there. It also looks amazing with pinks as well. And it, it kind of adds a little... It's also dark enough to add a little bit of substance. So I'm going to feature this reasonably heavily. Um, just... It just is me <laughs> rising up and down. It's just one of those great colours and it tends to tie things in, you know, uh, together. And it literally ties any colour together. It's brilliant. I love it. There you go, 3004, RAL 3004. It's just a fantastic colour. That's quite interesting, actually. You can see how strong the, the currents are here because it's taking my paint, so kind of blowing the paint that way. That's because I have to have an extractor on, and the extractor in the corner is designed to take all the nasty things out of the environment. So, like I mentioned earlier, this is very nasty paint. Let's just pop that there. Um, there we go. See, so essentially what happens is um, the air comes through at the end and through, <laughs> actually, I, I just going around that way. Yeah, so there are two vents there and I could pull all the air from outside the building into here. It swirls around in these cascading edges. It collects all of the nasty vapours and then the pressure in here, which is negative, so it's sucking more air out than it takes in, essentially goes out then through the extractor it's filtered and that's where we go so that's the setup in here which of course it has to be because the paints are very toxic so at least you know i'm going to be all right for the next time you tune in eh <laughs> right how are we doing so far we're doing great um gonna go in with a light yellow now this is like a canary yellow so i want to feature some of this maybe at the bottom and i think definitely maybe on this side here and I want to come back to this side because I want to pop some silver in in just a second. And I think maybe it might be nice to have a little drop there. And maybe that's it at the moment. So I'll probably come back to my canary yellow, uh, sorry, my melon yellow. 
which is one of the first colours we put in over there. But for now, I need to add some of my metallics. Now, this is where it starts to get really interesting, because... Why is that then, Ed? Well, we've got this thick, gloopy silver metallic, which is just amazing. So we're going to pop this in just a few areas here. It doesn't have to be too much, and it's not going to go and travel very far. Uh, once I've added my special stuff to it. But this silver is kind of like a bit of a leveller. It's, it's, it's nice. It just adds a little bit of gravitas to it. Um, a little bit of shininess, a little bit of calm, a little coolness um, to a very, very vibrant painting. We like a bit of cool, don't we? Of course we do. Okay, so there's a couple more colours I want to add in before we uh, go in with a little white and black. Okay, now one of them, which is a favourite one, if you've watched the broadcasts before, then you'll know that the Queen's Gold is perhaps <laughs> one of the uh, one of the most famous colours that we use. If I put that down there, Eddie can give you a little look at it. Um, and the Queen's Gold is actually, and I kid you not, only used by us and Her Majesty the Queen at Buckingham Palace here in the UK. So we're very, very privileged to use that one. It's extremely expensive. So I say I'd like to use it sparingly, but we don't do that. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'll point you that. There you go. Yep, there you go. Okay, you'll have a bit of a zoom on it, sorry. Too, too keen, as always, look. <laughs> and that way you should be able to see that moving inside the camera, which would probably look really cool as well. Okay, right, so we're going to have that, and then I'm going to start in some gold. And then we're going to pop some copper on as well. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have some little drop of gold there and i'm just going to pop these in in some some little pockets here and there there we go just some more small circles we'll, we'll get these all moving around very very shortly folks don't worry all will become clear just stick with it it's nice and i think we'll go for one just here there we go doesn't matter about the blobs here and there it's fine let's not have all this wasted on the floor there we go, we can let that just drizzle and drip around. Beautiful. Right, okay, let's get the lid roughly back on that one. Now then, there's a couple of things that I want to do before we progress too far. There's a couple of other really, really strong colours that I just want to add in. Uh, one of our favourites is this one. I'm not quite sure how this is going to look on camera, but <laughs> I'm going to come over to what is your far right-hand side. Um... Okay, can you can you see me there, buddy? Yeah, there we go. So this one is Piaggio Scooter Green. Mm. Yeah, so we're just going to... Oh, shoelace caught. Cool. So Adi will give you a little zoom on that. That's a real pop of colour. I mean, that's gorgeous. It really it lights up like a Christmas tree, this one does. We're going to drop another one in there. It's very similar to the water blue that we had earlier, but just with a few different properties. So we're not going to put a huge amount in there. Just a little soup song. But that's looking nice. Okay, and now the next thing I need to be really, really super careful with is the black. So we're just going to have a very small feature with this. Now, the tin is pretty big. So what I'm going to do, we're going to take the tin. <laughs> we're going to take the tin and pop it here. Okay. And I am going to get some out of here. <laughs> Eventually. Ah, there we go. Look, it's been. A, I'll say it's been a long day, but uh, oh dear, I can never get lids off anything. Right. Okay. So we'll leave that there. And why? Are, why am I doing this, Ed? Let me tell you. This is because I can get a little bit more control over where it goes. So as I'm pouring, it's going to be a lot easier to move the little plastic cup than it is trying to be accurate as I can with a giant can. If you see what I mean. Right, okay, so this is where I've got to think about now, where I'm going to add these little seams, and it, and I don't need them in very many places, but I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to add a seam through there, and this is where I'm trying to figure out now. <clears throat> maybe one there, only needs a couple of others. I'm going to do maybe one here, through the orange. Let me come around there. And I'm probably, yes, going to do one around there. And I'll leave it at that for now, and we'll see how we get on. Now, 
Okay, one more significant colour left, which is going to be this copper. This is the most amazing copper. I'm, I'm trying to achieve a specific effect with this, but I'm not sure if I can do it because it can be a little problematic. So I'm just going to go nice and easy. Ooh. <laughs> How therapeutic is that? Oh, there we go. Little. I'll show you inside the tin as well in a minute. It literally is like liquid caramel. Kids, don't try this at home. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the, um, you can probably see the gold blob as well, can't you, that I've just put on. How crazy is that? Can you imagine how amazing that's going to look in about five minutes, ten minutes' time? So look. Look, see the tin? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Look at that. <laughs> there we go. Right, okay. So, I've just got to change out my gloves, and then we're going to get the copper on. Okay, this is good. Then we're going to get a little drop of white, and then you watch what's going to happen, because we are going to do something pretty crazy in just a second. Now, for those of you who've seen the broadcast before, you might know what's coming next, because you may have seen me tackle these kinds of paintings before. However, if you haven't seen it being done before, you're in for a bit of a treat. Because I'm not quite sure you're going to know what's coming up next. Right, okay, let's get the let's get the copper on. So I'm going to pick my my small coppery moments. Let's take one just there. Okay, now let me tell Aidy where we're going now. So I think what I'm going to do, mate, I'm going to go just north of the red. So in between the red and there, look. So let's do that. Let's get one in there, and let's get. Let's get one on the corner, it's the top right. Yep. We're going to circle that. And I think we'll go bottom, so we're kind of a uh, 7 o'clock mark down on the bottom here. And we'll probably leave it at that. Right then, that's quite a few colours, isn't it? I think it's about 15 colours. There's only one colour I haven't put in. And I'm saving that till last because it is poss quite possibly an even bigger favourite <laughs> than the Queen's gold. It is. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'll show you. It is Suarez Blue. Yay! Woohoo! Now, let me come up to Peter's egg. It's a slidey camera. Shall I show you why this is amazing? This is a unique colour just for us here. It doesn't exist anywhere else. It is our own unique colour. And it is this most, I'll come this way, amazing metallic blue. I'm trying to hold that up so you can see it. Let me move the fingers around. Let's go to corner cam and have a look, shall we? Because the light's better. How amazing is that? <sighs> That's what we're going to put on next. Isn't that extraordinary? The most beautiful colour. It's almost like it's got a turquoise undertone, but uh, this is right in smack bang in the middle of the blue spectrum. Uh, but it's got hints of silver and chocolate in it. It's just utterly fantastic. Right, so we're going to decant some of that. We're going to get that into a smaller vessel because it will be an awful lot easier to use. Okay, right, so let's just get the lid on that. We've got about, <laughs> we've got most of the major colour groups out at the moment. Okay, right, so let's get the Suarez Blue going. You want some in there. So we're not going to go sparingly with this. We're going to go mad because we love it. Let's get some one in there. This is nice. So this is my opportunity now before we put the special ingredient on. For me to decide what do I, what other colours do I need, where do I need them? Yeah, let's actually have one there as well. Let's go one there. Um, now, I just want to make sure that I don't need the lighter of the lime greens, and I think I might do 
folks, and I'm going to introduce a line just down there. So now there's the money shot. This is all the all camera shot. There we go. We promised you all four cameras. I'm going to wave my arms around so you can know that I'm real and alive. <laughs> and it's not edited. This is exactly how it's happening. We love to show you things raw and unedited because, you know, this is the way great paintings are born. So why would you mess with that with having some real, you know, wonderfully sort of edited and polished thing? Don't know. Embrace how these things are created and that's what we're doing here for you we want to to give you a proper experience about what it's like to paint big abstract paintings you know we've spent a lot of money over the years an awful lot of money getting to this point you know and there's nobody else doing what we're doing so we're very very proud of everything we achieve here right we're almost ready for the secret ingredient i'm going to pop that down there Woo! right we're doing we're doing pretty well so far aren't we so everybody if you're enjoying this so far then please do give us a thumbs up it's a little waving flag to all the youtube uh computers that says we're enjoying this and it helps us spread it out across the algorithms and across the internet to others who might also want to enjoy it so a thumbs up if you're enjoying this would be amazing thank you very much and don't forget, if you are new here, please do give us a subscribe. It means that you never, ever miss any of our upcoming videos, especially when we're creating amazing, awesome pieces like this. And we don't want you to miss anything. Hit the red button, click on the bell icon. That's you done. It's as simple as that. And as if that's not all, we've also got a Patreon account as well. Kill surprise. It just gets better and better. And what's so cool about that? Well, not only do you get exclusive access to almost everything before anybody else does, we're also shh, giving art away. Uh-huh, you heard me right. Original Suarez, we're giving away to selected patrons. Isn't that incredible? You can see the tiles up above on the screen, the different tier layers. Go check it out. It helps us get support, but it also means we carry on doing these amazing things week after week. Okay, brilliant, guys. Thank you so much. Right, are we ready then? Of course we're ready. Right, here we go. Shall we do this, buddy? Shall we do it? Do it! Just do it! Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Nothing is impossible. No, what are you waiting for? Do it. Just do it. Yes, you can. Ah, right. Well, if Shia LaBeouf says do it, we're going to do it. Here we go, then. We've got solvent-based thinners. There we go. And now I'm going to start thinning this paint. So I'm going to start gently by teasing it. You watched what happens now when thinners hits the paint. The magic starts to appear. And then we're going to add in some whites very shortly. So let's get that on just for now. It helps keep the paint liquid as well. And this is going to start spreading. Look, it's already spreading. All exciting things are happening. Right, where's the rest of it? So as this starts to develop and move now, so Aidy's going to give you some, some overhead shots and some pans and some tilts and show you what's going on while I decide where the next wave of paint is going to go. Oh, now this is also quite a stressful moment for me because I have to try and figure out where the thinners has got to go and in what rough kind of quantities. If I put too much on, it's going to flow way, way too much. So this is all about sort of teasing the outsides of the paint masses to start moving. So... Let's see if I can get that nicely moving. Now, I might have to start gently teasing this, but I want to attack it with white in a moment because that's the one thing we haven't done. And now I didn't want to put the white on just at the moment because I'm actually going to thin that down specifically uh, in just a few moments. So let me go this way. I'm still on overhead. That's good. So I'm going to start teasing this around in a minute and moving it with a with a, an implement. 
But for now, this stops it all from drying out and actually just gets the uh, gets the paint starting to break down those chemicals now. This is uh, having a molecular uh, effect on changing the structure of the paint, which is exactly what I want to happen. Um, OK, so far, so good. Right. OK, let's clear myself some space. OK, this is good. Uh, did I put I did put the lime on, didn't I? Yes, that's that done. So if anything, I might have a bit more melon yellow in just a moment. So my yellow I'll keep out. I'm having a little talk to myself now, folks. I've got to make sure that I'm uh, means testing all the right things I need to ask myself in my head. <laughs> Definitely not going mad, I promise. At least not today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Right, so I'm going in with the white now. I'm going to thin the white down a little bit. Um, and then not too much. Okay, but I want to get some some little slivers of white. This is one of the first white applications that I'm going to do. Okay, so now I've given the early stages of the paint an opportunity to start moving. This gives me the opportunity now to look at where my gaps are going to be. So I'm going to start filling the gaps now, filling the, whoop, filling the voids. And seeing where things take me. So, it's looking reasonable. So let's get that on next and figure out what I'm going to do with that. Right, let's get some... No, actually, why does that feel too liquid on the top? Let me give that another stir around, folks. Just give me a second. Talk amongst yourselves. That's better. A few moments later. <laughs> Okay, so far so good. Right, I think we'll do that again because that's worked quite well. There's a lot of volume of paint going on into this. There'll probably be about 12, 13 litres by the time I've finished, which is pretty insane. And you imagine what that weighs. Um, we're going to be adding that to canvas and trying to actually suspend it over a frame. So even just looking at this and looking at the colours, the logistics of moving paint like this are actually, you know, quite intense as well. Um, so the important thing is, is, and getting the painting right but of course afterwards we've got we've got to be able to move it we've got to be able to to get paint to actually stretch around the frame uh, which is another matter but you know we're pretty good at this stuff now we know what we're doing okay let's get these gaps filled up That's good. That's working so... That's all right so far. Okay, right. I think we'll do one more of those. And uh, then I'm going to start and come around the edges and I'll start moving it around a little bit. That's quite important. I've right, got a bit of skin. Let's get rid of that. Right, it's getting very messy over here now. Hopefully, you should start to see some real nice zooms and uh, things appearing, which is quite interesting. There's some nice things happening over there with the pink, but I am going to start manoeuvring some of this paint around in just a few moments. Okay, right, we're almost at a point where uh, where I've filled in most of the gaps, so I'm just going to keep going with that. Okay, this is looking good. This is coming on. Right, okay. So, time for glove change. And then we're going to get one of the tools out. And I'm going to start manoeuvring a little bit of paint around. See what happens. Okay, so far so good. The gloves are holding up. The paint's holding up. Uh, all is good. I'm just going to quickly ask Aid, are your feed looking all right? Feed health and everything so far? Okay, we've got green lights out in control. Fantastic. Okay, right, so remember I mentioned the, the, the old melon? Well, I'm going to drop in 
Uh, I do need to lighten this corner up, so I'm just going to drop a little bit of yellow in there. All right. Now, I'm quite aware we haven't got much red at the moment, so this is nice. Now that the paint is starting to talk back to me, and again, I promise you I'm not losing my mind, um, then I'll take you for a look on Rome Cam in just a second. Let's, uh, let's pop you uh, over there just for a second, and we're going to have a proper look in a minute. Um, I need to drop in a few few little droplets of red here and there because I want to just sort of jazz this corner up a little bit all right nothing too major this is actually red I know it might look orange on the camera um let's drop that one in there let's do one in the corner so I'm going to have to turn my attention to those very shortly because I don't want that to go off that's got no thinners on it so I've got to be careful Okay, that's fine. Right, so I've got this is full of thinners as well, but I just need to have a little spray. Um, okay. So let's just get that moving and then I'm going to start moving some other stuff around. I'm going to give you a little look on Rome Cam in just a second. Okay, let's just get that moving. This is good so far. I like it. I like it. Got some really nice shapes and textures coming out at the moment. Right, okay. <laughs> Let's have a go with Rome Cam then, buddy. And I'll show you what we've got so far. Here we go with Rome Cam. There we go. So I'm completely mobile, completely wireless. This is some really, really interesting things starting to happen now. Now, I do have reflection from the overhead lighting system. Can't do much about that. So you just have to work through, through the panels that you can see in the ceiling being reflected. This is going to be the glossiness that you'll see when it's when it's dry and finished. There we are. Look at that. I particularly want to go over here. Look, where amazing things are happening with the blue, where it's hitting the pink already. Look, you know we've only just started. So this is this is the crucial bit now, where I'm actually going to physically start moving a paint around. So far, we've uh, we've had this very organic kind of movement to it all, as you can see. Uh, but there's lots of gaps, lots of white space. And lots of blocks of colour that I want to start moving around. So that's what we're going to have a go with next. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just drop Rome Cam down here. It's more of a bird's eye view, mate. Um, so we'll go down lower on Rome Cam. Give you a slightly uh, closer perspective. That's better. Right, so having applied an awful lot of paint, I'm going to grab two of my favourite things. Uh, we're going to first of all attack, I think this... Let me take the wood off on this edge. Yeah, I need to keep the wood on. Okay, that's fine. Right, so uh, I'm going to use these, which are grout spreaders. Amazing bits of kit. They're just plastic. But they allow me to put different kinds of pressure on the paints and move different and varied amounts. And as you'll see now, I'm going to work fairly quickly around with these, maneuvering and taking paint strain strands into other spaces. It's probably best I'd kind of demonstrate, so as you can see down here, look what I can do very, very quickly. I can bring paint in. I can do wonderful things with it, which is what I'm trying to do. Look, I can add seams and squiggle. Oh, it's, it's just it's just amazing. And I particularly uh, want to have a look at some of the gold and the coppers and encourage those to have a little bit of a move. All right, so I'm going to work fairly reasonably quickly around around these areas it's not just all on the outside around the outside around the outside there look at that isn't that delicious mm. <laughs> see what i've done there with the white oh yeah this is the kind of thing we could do man um and i'm not done yet with the with the with the chemicals so uh we're going to introduce um another kind of chemical in a moment but for now i just need to turn my attention to the outsides now i am going to lose quite a bit of the outsides and lose 10 centimeters all the way around um, because that's what it will need to stretch around the frame so i'm going to lose that so i want to go as close to the edges as i can of course i do even though i am going to lose some of it uh, but that's okay you need to make sure that the actual canvas is covered and around the edges as well it's very important So just introducing a few little tweaks here and there. I'm just gently dragging here and there. Okay, that's looking nice. So 
So there we go. I'm just encouraging some paint to move. You can see some of these incredible features already starting to, to happen. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you can see that moving, can't you? Yeah, I bet. Yeah, that's getting very, very powerful around there now. That's good. That's good. This is this is going well, folks. I'm liking it. It's it's feeding back to me. Right, so I'm gonna work around this side, buddy. So I'm gonna go up the left, far left hand side, and then I'll be working around the top. So you can choose in it. So oh sorry, uh left for you, left hand side for you, isn't it? Oh sorry, I thought you were on overhead, my apologies. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a right right hand side then. <laughs> okay, right. So you can see here, look, little. It's not a problem, but there's quite a mass here. So I'm going to just drag a little paint over into this area, and maybe just take a little scoop of the orange. It should look fairly dramatic. Let's bring that over here. All right, we're going to bring this out into this area. Very nice. Let's give a few droplets over on that side, get rid of some of the residue. Now back over with the gold. The gold doesn't react too well to this particular thinners, so which is good, actually. Uh, it helps me create different effects. So I'm going to start and tease some of this out into this side, particularly with the yellow as well, which is a really nice combo. We're going to drag the area. I see the yellow through. Remember when I said about this burgundy being a really sort of, um, you know, a go-between and in-between. Oh, I've come off. Uh, that's all right, not to worry. I'll wipe that off in just a second. <laughs> yeah, that, um, that burgundy colour, really versatile that. It's really proving to be to be rather spectacular in this corner over here. Um, and as you can see, I mean, look how well it goes with the yellow and it's parked next to the pink and it looks equally epic against that as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a really, really good colour. It's a very underrated um, and, uh, but I think as a carrier for everything, it's just fantastic. Right, okay. Working our way around, this is good. I think what I'd like to do is bring the pink, just bring a small strain of pink out in here. Let's keep this thing going. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come around this feature here. So I'm just going to bring, there we go, look, just a little one into the, into the lime green. They're a great combo to have, the pink and lime green. Love it. They're an absolute classic. Let's get the finger in there. Look, we need the paint to, to float. Let's keep that there for a second. You can see I'm just forming around my finger now. There we go. Just encouraging that to have a little sort of break point there. This is nice. See what we've done then with the pink. Pink's coming round, which is really good. Happy with that. So this corner's starting to really come out. So I'm going to go around this top edge now, or uh, bottom edge, if you're looking on <laughs> PTZ. <laughs> right, okay back on overhead again right let's see how we're doing here yeah no, i think that's pretty good so far just sort of having to talk to myself mm. it's often it's a good way actually it's a good practice for me it's a way like i say i can fact check the things in my head because if it doesn't sound right what i'm talking about i know i've got it wrong um, quite a cool system really so we're just going to tease a few a few of these little striations out into the pink just to liven the pink up a little bit i don't mind bringing colors that i've already got on the ground spreader out to other places and locations. It helps just move things around a little bit. Yeah. Don't forget, you might not see what I'm manipulating at the moment, which is white, because obviously I'm doing that white paint on a white canvas. <laughs> so it could be quite difficult to see. However, I can assure you, as it starts to mix with some of the other colours, You'll start to see what I mean, but yes, I'm definitely having a maneuver of uh, of the white. Now we're into the silver territory now, so I'm going to start and bring that around the edge. That's nice, and we'll bring some bring that mixed in nicely. Oh, that's be look at that, that's beautiful. Yeah, let's have some fun now out here. Oh, nice, yeah, but that looks good. So we're pick we're picking up some of the other colours here. There we go. I'm just gently just sort of teasing them around a little bit. It's all about keeping flow and keeping continuity, that kind of thing. Because whilst this painting is split into individual colour groups, of course it is with the way that we've applied it, in actual fact it's nice just to bring some of those features out into other parts of the painting. So that's what this is all about. You see there are just a big skadoosh of orange coming out and I'm bringing that into the white as well. It just helps bring some of these areas together uh, more naturally. Now, that's quite interesting, I can see there. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring a bit of silver. 
and I'm going to bring it there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And a couple of high spots here and there. Now, this is just where the volume of thinners is so concentrated that it's caused um, a, a high point. So I'm just looking for those high points now, making sure we've got we've got paint on them. As soon as I can pop paint on them, look, um, the high points get saturated in the correct way. They get more mass, more density on them of paint, and they tend not to be high points anymore. And this spreader is just one of the best tools for doing it because you can really put a lot of concentrated weight over in, in a particular part without it causing any issues. Lovely. That's absolutely superb. There. Some amazing things happening there with the orange and the and the black. Right, okay. So, while AD shows you the black fronding, I'm going to get, carry on over on this top edge up here. Uh, but I've got to say, well, this, is, this is coming out really well. Really, I'm really, really pleased with that. It's exactly how I thought it would go, which is always, always a good thing to have things going the way that you plan them. Uh, okay. Now, we're quite heavy on the thinners up this area, so I think it's going to be quite a challenge, this particular part of it. So this blending phase now is really, really important, really quite key and crucial. So I have to make sure this is correct. It's another area where it's got a little bit of a high point. Uh, so while I leave my hand there, I'm going to double check where we are with the other things. Yeah, this, this is going really well. This is nice. Okay, so that's fine. Let's just get rid of some of that off the... Now, another high point here. So I'm going to d dive in with the finger. In fact, I'm going to pull in. There we go. Let's get the fingers in. I'm going to start and manoeuvre some of this around. This, if you can remember, was the amazing copper that you saw me in with the tin. All right, so I've just got the fingers in that. We'll let that settle itself down. That's fine. Uh, that's no big deal. Let's move the yellow over to the high point that we had. Let that sort itself out. Okay, right, so we are we are moving. What are we moving? We're moving some gold. We're moving some copper. We're back with the limes. Looking amazing. What a combination the lime and the purple is. I mean, an absolute classic. Again, we're just in that sort of phase now of making sure we've got, we've got the canvas filled. That's number one. We haven't got any high or low points anywhere that we want to deal with. And this is just about the joy, really, of just moving paint around. I, lo I love doing this. I mean, this is, you know, this is the best bit. And this is the painting bit. <laughs> yeah. Some really, again, some amazing things forming here. This little sort of, I don't know, river or estuary. I think that's a good word for it. This water blue down here is just looking sensational. And again, it's, it's a really good opportunity for me to... Just look at any the parts of the canvas that don't have any paint on them. Because I know it's scarcely imaginable after all this paint's gone on, but there are still one or two pieces of canvas that actually physically don't have anything on them. Um, so it's a good opportunity, you know, what I call a bit of, bit of paint housekeeping. All right, so we're just going to feature some blue through here. So just to refresh your memories, so I am using an enamel paint. And uh, this is especially made for us here. Can't get it anywhere else. We've been using it now for oh, a long time, probably 10 or 12 years. We've been messing around with it for all that time now. We have a recipe now that is so good. You get to do this kind of thing with it. But of course, uh, with it though, one of the amazing tools that I have at my disposal is the thinners that's matched to it. Uh, which actually is just a standard solvent-based thinners. Unlike most solvent-based paints, um, we use the same kind of materials to thin them down. Uh, these are no different. But when they get hold of the paints, as you can see from some of these amazing camera shots, some incredible things start to happen, and that's why we use them. And I don't think there are very many artists on the planet doing this with enamel paints mainly because of the health and safety considerations but it's now here's another thing you might also be interested to uh, to know that actually my canvas uh is very 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 tough as you can see i mean i'm putting all these paints on it in all this paint and depth volume and nothing's gone up in smoke yet 
Uh, it's an extremely hard wearing canvas and one that we have made again especially for us just like the paints and it's designed to cope with the intensity of the enamels that we're using and this is uh, an item that we order two or three times a year in lo very large quantities and have delivered here and that is made to our own specification if you want to know what that is it's no secret it's 430 GSM and it's cotton duck uh, but what it does have is a unique priming coat put over it at the factory. And that's not something I'm going to reveal. But it's a special compound designed to go with the enamel paints. Um, that's the reason. And it can withstand the, 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 the real you know, the power of the thinners. The thinners is incredible stuff. You imagine how hard wearing the paint is and what this thinners is doing to it. It literally you know, destroys it. It's, it's wreaking havoc uh, with it. And yet the canvas can cope. Uh, but again, it's another thing we've had to develop over the years and another reason that we are unique here because uh, many other artists just simply just won't go to these lengths to do it. Not that I'm sure, you know, people probably think at home, well, I don't have to, you know, but I like to be different. I like materials that excite me, you know, want to do things that are different. I don't want to be like everybody else. And that's another reason why we do these streams with four cameras and go to all the hassle and all the expense and all the stress of doing this week after week and don't forget you can tune in every single wednesday when we do this live pretty much throughout the year every wednesday here from suarez hq you can find a link on all of the social media channels um, plus you can also go to the live stream tab on my website and if i speak to adrian very nicely he might even give you a screenshot of that as we speak And you can see over now on the, the uh, on the image that we're on all social media channels. If you want to find us, we're even on TikTok as well. How incredible is that? And we're doing some incredible things with paint. And you can also follow what we're doing with all our clients and our special projects. And of course, you get all the content for the live streams, all the links, all the notifications when they happen. So please do give us a follow. Lots of really cool things going on on there. All of the channels. It'd be great to see you over there. Okay, so let's have a quick recap on how we're getting on. I'm finally, finally going to be able to step back from this in just a moment. Because uh, I want to have a look and see how we're getting on. But crucially, I just need to do a double take. And make sure I haven't missed any areas with paint. And there are a few, few things I just want to turn my attention to. I might have to go quiet for a minute because I think I'm going to have to hold my breath and concentrate on a couple of them. Mm. So if it does go quiet, I apologise. So, Aid is just going to show you our Instagram feed, which is pretty cool. So there you can see the diversity of all the posts. I'm normally putting two to three posts out a day. But just life. It's life as a professional artist and all the things that AD and I do here. It's really cool, actually. If I do say so myself, it's a very cool platform. <laughs> we, we love Instagram. Um, so great. Be lovely to see you there, folks. Give us a follow. Okay, fantastic. So um, just before I step away and have a proper look what i'm also trying to do here i'm just going to um, mop that up i'm also very anxious that, that we're following to a customer brief here as well which of course i mentioned that right at the start this is actually on behalf of the customer uh, so i have to make sure that um, i'm fulfilling what they actually want so there are a couple of things which i need to introduce here and there and i'm just going to do it now so i need to get a little drop more white in just here and there Nothing too, nothing too major. We're going to let that sink in for a while because everything's still reacting. I can already see a couple of spaces and places that I want to do something in. And I'm just looking at the way the paint is flowing at the moment. Now, on the join between the tables, I think everything's okay at the moment. But I want to take a little bit of paint that way. And I want to send a few of these flows that way. Okay. Um, and then I've got to make sure my distribution of yellow is okay. So I may do something with that very shortly. Um, but other than that, it's just the top edge. So I'm going to eke out the top edge a little bit. Um, 
but I think we've got some pretty good shapes appearing there. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. So there is a, a bit more tweaking to do. So we'll get some fresh gloves on. And then while Ada does some zooms. I'll change my glasses. My glasses, my gloves. <laughs> I haven't got any glasses on. Well, I don't know. Right, okay, so I'm just going to talk to AD for a second, dude. What I think I'm going to do is just prop this these this side up, look, because I'm getting the, the runoff is coming down here. Yeah, would you concur? So I'm just going to prop this. I'm going to prop. Uh, I'm going to prop the cent the, the end here with two, and I'm just going to send it backwards, just just a little bit that way, mate. All right. To see if that, if that helps. Then I want to turn my attention to this side here. I mean, we're getting some really nice stuff going on here, but it's it's not enough. So I need to know to to feed. I need to feed some more color that way. So what I'm just doing is now I'm just checking with Aidy because he's got a di far different viewpoint to me here. So he's he's uh, in a in a position of being able to see different things to me. But yeah, it is, mate. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're just having a little. <sighs> yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, send it back that way. Yeah. So we're just having a chat now about because uh, he can see things I can't. Uh, again, just, I'm just fact checking um, that we're moving things in the right way. That's all. Um, okay, there's some epic colours coming out here. <laughs> we're doing our best to show you, folks, but uh, but looking looking pretty sharp and pretty awesome. So I want to introduce a few colours into a few other places because that's quite important. Well, we love all the you know, all the shapes and all the things that are appearing. Um, I still need to pull some of it back this way. Um, so we're just going to monitor that down there and I might have to prop the other side up. You know, we have got it level, but there's a limit to how level something can be as we're finding out. Um, so that's fine. I think what I'm going to do is pull that this way a little bit because I can. Let's get that over there. Okay, that's fine. And then we're definitely, definitely going to be pulling this orange up here, I think I might in, even introduce another colour up here. Um, so let's just get that. Right, so maybe just... yeah, no, I think the balance is good, mate. It's just of this this flow. Um, which is fine. I just don't want it to be any more than it is. You know, here's fine. In fact, I might, I might tease, might tease the aqua sort of in more, more of an arc. <laughs> Tell us, we're, these, here you are, look, you're privy to the conversations we have when I'm painting. So I'm just going to see if I can bring that around a bit. That's better. Just see if I can send it that way a little bit. Uh, lime's looking good there. We've got some great arcs going down here. So that's nice. We'll preserve that. This is now moving this way a little bit, which is much better. And I think I'm going to take the, the, some of the pink this way because I've got quite a volume here that I can use. So let's get the, this up here. Let's see if we can fuse it here. That's nice. Just gets a volume up here that we can do something with. Changes the dynamic a little bit. Just got to be very careful on how much I do this because it's only got a certain um, window before it'll bite me. So I think what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to get rid of some of the residue on the end. So far, though, so good. It's just this top edge. So I think I'm definitely going to have to introduce a colour in there. Uh, that top edge is too white, which was something that the client did say. White, but not too white. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to know that, but I'll figure it out. Uh, OK, right, fine. Let's leave that there. OK, so now I've got to make my decisions. Well, this is good. This is stabilised here, buddy. See where we've got the, with the red. It hasn't come any further. Look, so that's good. We've got the streak of blue going through, so that's okay. Um, yeah, so so that's nice. I mean, I actually really like that red and yellow. That's that's a that's a beautiful little feature. So I just need to send something that way to do the, a similar kind of thing. So I've just got to pick my colour out over there to add. Um, it's just a tricky bit. This is the tricky bit. Which one goes in there? The Suarez blue is looking nice. All these look nice down here. Uh, 
Right, tricky, tricky, tricky. Yeah, uh, it's almost tempting to put grey to, to put a silver there. So I'll, I'll do a silver mixed with a black. I think Zadie and I are just having a conversation with each other. So this this is where it's really starting to you know this is the make or break bit now, isn't it? So I need to introduce a, a more solid colour here. So we'll, we'll get the silver in there because we've got silver in there already. And then I want to see what that looks like. So I'm going to glance across the shelf and see if I've missed anything. Um, well, I don't think I have. Orange is pretty good. Yeah, copper maybe. Right, so we'll do the copper. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, yes, well, that's I've got to still look at that, mate. Uh, right. Okay, let's get the copper on. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> Poppers going on, so we can have a nice mix with that. Let's put that there. And it comes. Right, that's good. It's good. I'm liking that. Right, so I can get now to manoeuvring those around a little bit. That is done. So let's get a fresh one. Uh, and then I am going to get my uh a special liquid on this in just a second okay right let's see let's see if we can figure that out let's get this moved around a little bit and then i have always got the option to introduce a little black into here if i want to make it a bit more solid so let's first of all get the blue, see what's happening with that. Now I've got this seam of black here, which is looking really nice. So let me take a tentative drag up there. Now I think it's going to need some of its own accord. So that, that's fine. That's fine. That's what it's saying. We need a little, a little skadoosh of black in there. Oh, there's a hole. Not now. Right, so we've already got some black out, which is great. So I can just, that's much better anyway now in that, in that top edge. But I can just introduce a small, small seam maybe... maybe that and we'll give that actually we'll give that a spray and let it sort of uh sort itself out right so we're almost at that time folks where mention i mentioned earlier about using a special chemical well this is it this is it in the uh, in the black container i'll say dark container it's pretty much covered in paint uh this is what we affectionately call special source if you've not seen the broadcast before and this contains a mixture of four different chemicals in there one of which is thinners, but I can't tell you about the others because it's a secret. <laughs> so with that in mind, it's going to have some pretty crazy effects now, um, which is what I'm going to do. We're going to start to bring some of those effects out into the painting by giving a couple of the areas a bit of a spray. So just while I'm turning my attention to other things. Right, okay. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do it up here. So are we, are we on this? Uh, are we on this top edge then, buddy? So we're gonna we're gonna go around this area kind of here. Right, are we ready? Here we go. Give it a spray. Oh, look at that already! What? What is this alchemy madness you hit us with, Mr. Suarez? <laughs> so that is going to produce a really amazing um, peppered effect over in this corner. So that looks pretty cool. So we're going to let that just run. I'm not going to do it anywhere else. It's just going to be that top edge. Now, what will be interesting now, it tends to eat everything. So we'll see now what happens to the black, because I have a, a feeling now the black is probably going to disappear. Um, in which case, we can reintroduce a little drop more. But that's fine. We can add to it. It's the taking away from it that's the hard bit. So I think what I'm going to do, I am going to add just a drop more in there. And I'm just going to spread it. Because this will also spread the chemical I've just put on. So let's see. Let's see what happens here. Wow, this has got a, this is crazy. <laughs> Look at this. Look what's happening to it. 
Right in front of our eyes. Wowzers. Intense. Right, okay. Well, I think we're going to... Yeah, we'll just, we'll just leave that there for, for now. To sort itself out. Just checking now to see if I've left any other areas without any painting. Because we are looking pretty good here, guys. And I'm really, really super happy with this. Uh, so far. <clears throat> okay, so we are looking really good. There's a couple of bits I just want to turn my attention to. Let's put the black down because we don't need it. And then I want to just keep revisiting. I and mean, this is a secret, really, isn't it? It's to keep revisiting, see what's going on. You know, are we achieving everything? Does everything look reasonable? What does my balance look like? What are the effects I'm producing? Um, you know, over in this corner now, I'm really quite, kind of... I want to make sure, you know, even though it looks very dense of a single colour, it isn't. It's got the most... Look at that as I dig into it. The most beautiful tones going on, and I'm just I'm just about eking those out all the time because they are just incredible, and I don't want to miss those. So this is where paint manipulation really kinds of does take on a, a a real art form in itself. I know that's a we're creating art anyway, but actually the process becomes an art form. Do you, do you, if you see what I mean, you know, because I'm understanding what's going on underneath you know i'm trying to find and split split down the blue and the yellow you know so we can find out all these rich kind of veins and seams that are just populated underneath you know and this is where the densities of the paint uh, start to play out with themselves you know because the paint all weighs uh, different amounts so white for instance is uh, a lot heavier uh, than a lot of the other colors it, it is a lot more dense so of course that has a tendency to to find its way underneath other things. So, of course, when you start digging around, suddenly you find white, because white has decided to travel under another colour of paint. It's incredible. Another reason why I love, love using these paints. You know, there is almost this, dare I say, unexpected quality to it. And the more that you use it, the more you understand that these kinds of things happen. And, of course, then the more control you have and the more you're able to do these kinds of things with it, which I think is it's an absolute privilege. It really is. So I think, folks, we're getting back to the painting. Uh, we're in pretty good shape. There's some amazing things happening now. Goodness me, look at this in the, here. Wow, I mean, that's quite extraordinary. We've got this, this uh, see what's happening now. We've got this line appearing. Oh, that just looks incredible. I'm loving that. Where we were concerned earlier on, look where it was flowing too much. Now I've stemmed the flow. Things are returning back to <clears throat> where they should be, which is fantastic. Um, the colours, the blue and the, and the red together are just looking amazing. So I'm going to uh, sort my gloves out and then I'm going to, there's one, one more thing I need to do. And then I'm going to give you a look with the Rome cam. I think this is going to look utterly breathtaking. So let me grab another one of my spreaders. I just want to turn my attention to this here. Just a little bit because it looks too much like a gecko to me. So let's just tease this white. Just very nice and gently. I mean, the paint's really thick here, uh, which is good. But we just want to just bring in one or two very, very light touches. That's all it is. You know, there's no, nothing too severe going on. But let's just get these blends kind of moving. This is so nice. I wish you could see this. You know, cameras will only go so far but this is just epic it really is and i know you use that word a lot but it is um okay right so it is joyous ad said that it's joyous and it is <laughs> I, let's just hope the paying customer thinks so right okay okay right fine so let's grab let's take the gloves off let's put some fresh ones on Let's give you a Rome cam view, shall we, and see what you think of that. Remember, do give us a thumbs up, guys, if you're enjoying this. And we're, we're over an hour now. <clears throat> look, look how amazing this is. Look what we've done together in an hour. Isn't this utterly fantastic? And it is, as AD says, an absolute joy to be able to do this with colour. Okay, fantastic. Right, Rome cam is go. We are throttle up, mate. Let's go. Right, so overall, look, there we go. That's what we've created. Now, the colour will look a little bit different on this camera. I can appreciate that, but we're trying to give you 
you know, a, a, a really good sort of bird's eye view about what's going on. So let's go close up now. Okay, let's see if I can give you that, which is one of the standout parts of me. And I'm really trying to keep the camera as steady as I can. Let's move to the left. Let's follow the Turquoise River. Let me change my foot position. There we go. And look what's happening when you think just as you're heading to into, into the abyss. Boom. There we go, look. And you get all these swirls. And look what's happened to the orange. It's disappeared and then it goes off into the pink. And all these incredible variations. And you just dart from one colour to the next to the next in the most sensational way. There we are now focusing on the centre. I'm going to go round the other side in just a second. That's looking pretty special. So I'm going to go around this side. And we'll show you where we sprayed with the cells. Now, can we see that? So it's got an eyeball now. It'll be looking at you. Okay. <laughs> It's all going on. Look at all these incredible features. And then you get all these tiny details. Everything from amoebas to jellyfish and the primordial soup of life. It's all going on. Honestly, I'm moving around here so slowly, but it probably looks like I'm speeding. But the, the, the details are extraordinary. If you can watch this on a big screen TV, I think right about now... You don't want to change places with anybody. Because I'd imagine this is just about as close as you're ever going to get to this without actually standing in front of it. Because... Of course, you can always commission one. Uh, that's exactly what somebody who saw us online did. And they've been here to visit. Twice, actually absolutely love what's going on here and let's face it why wouldn't you and they've decided commission and uh, this is one of the variations that i'm painting for them there is a blank canvas underneath would you believe and we'll be doing that one again soon uh, so they'll be getting two versions so the next one will be different but of a similar nature and i'm really looking forward to doing that one as well and there we go, folks. What do you think of that? I'll tell you right now, as I point that towards myself, this is the largest one <coughs> of this technique that I've done yet. <laughs> and I've done it in front of you guys, unedited, unscripted, but I know exactly what it is that I'm doing. And this is what happens. And when you practice, if you are a creative person, you practice, keep practicing, never give up, keep doing this every single day. You can do this. You've got ownership of this. And this is what can happen. And this is what we're doing day in, day out, and every single Wednesday, live for you across the internet. How unbelievable is that? And even now, in that five minutes we've looked at it on the Rome camp, things are changing again. It's developing, it's going its own way, it's just, its personality is coming out. I think that's looking pretty extraordinary, to be honest with you. Really, really, really epic. So let's pop you back down on the stand here. Okay, there we go. Please do let us know in the comments what you think because we'd love to know ah i think that's that's pretty good. i think i'm pretty much done there there we go what do we think of that then folks yeah an hour, an hour ago an hour ago that was a blank canvas and we were just looking at where all the cameras are and now we have got a client commission and a work of art created right in front of your very eyes with these unbelievable paints and with a little bit of thought and a little bit of practice and that's what we do here at Suarez HQ every single week and most days of the year, would you believe? <gasps> there we go. There's the four camera shot, everybody, for you to see in all its glory. That's pretty good, I think. And I'm very, very pleased with that. Uh, let's just hope the client likes it as well. Well, that's what we need to keep our fingers crossed about. <laughs> well, we hope you've enjoyed this broadcast today from Suarez HQ. Uh, here in the UK. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If this was your first time here, make sure you give us a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Drop us some comments, come and say hello, and also give us a subscribe to the channel. 
Now, we're doing this every single Wednesday. I know I keep saying it, but we wouldn't want you to miss on all the fun and the excitement. We've had an absolute blast of a time today, and we'll be doing it all again very, very soon live for you. So make sure you tune in for that. That just leaves me to say a big thank you to my colleague, Adrian, out in control, who's been pressing all the buttons and bringing you this visual spectacular here today. And from myself, we look forward to seeing you next time. But promise for one day that's us finished and wherever you are whoever you're with and whatever you're doing please stay safe and we look forward to seeing you next time that's it from suarez hq and a very very good day to you all